Yeah, welcome to round two of the quarterfinals, Scapeshift versus Gruel. Um, Cedric won the first game with a really nice topic and a and really nice baiting play. <laughs> yes, you could easily go like, oh, six damage and play this, but he realized there is a chance that Jan draws a counter spell and yeah. um, just that in was, case. Yeah, it was a really nice, nice, uh, nice play. And Cedric was going to six in this game, so yeah. that's something we didn't didn't address. address. <clears throat> so we see a hand which is really slow by Cedric, um, but it has a wasteland as well as a Birds of Paradise, so that's always a nice line of play. For instance, you play Birds of Paradise, play the Gelencore, wink on it, and play the wasteland, for instance, or you could go just Nissa turn two. So I like the sand. Even yeah, isn't it's... Nissa turn two really strong? Then you Nissa, then yeah. you can wasteland mm -hmm. after. You can evolution for something that's. Uh... Yeah, that's true. Uh, sacrificing the token, though you only get something for two, right? If you sack the token. You get if you sack the token, you get something for two years. Yeah, okay. But it's a nice hand. So it's a it's a weird hand. Like it plays kind of controlish, but I like it, especially because of the wasteland. On the other side, we see a very reactive side, uh, hand. And by the way, that's why I don't like those builds, those scapes of builds with like nemesis and a lot of counter spells. Um, I'm more for filtering, 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 removing, and then combo, because of those hands exactly. Like I wouldn't keep a hand, especially against the aggro deck, without like some kind of ramp or removal spell. I, I guess it is a charm, it's nice, but if you play the is a charm on the creature, then you have a really awkward hand after that. It's so. also is like your, your cards are delaying the game, but in that case, they're not helping you to get some thing. So yeah. you just die a bit later. And by the way, can we talk about the lightning, not lightning bolting the birds of paradise? Or is it charming in them? Like one of those two? Yeah, you, have, seems, you have to do that, right? That seems a bit loose, yes. There are so few scenarios where you don't let like, bolt the bird turn one. It, you, you might think like you can also bolt something later and... No, yeah, that's never worked out, no. <laughs> I mean, it can work out, but it doesn't make any sense. Your opponent gets so much tempo out of this card. And there's a reason why they are in the deck. And there's a reason why you have a bolt in your deck, so I really, <laughs> I really don't like this play. And now he gets really punished for this. Like, yeah, and now Cedric, uh, Cedric can play the Earthshaker Kenra, which now gets the bolt, I guess, because that's what you was uh, playing for. Mm. Which is, maybe he was hoping to drain something expensive and use it later for more important creatures, but... Especially if, if your opponent is a full hand, then you can see, expect. Yeah. I like thinking of that, but it, that's really greedy and I don't think it's necessary because you're not on a value game here. And and what are you ramping into it? Like, you don't have anything to ramp into. So, if you get the mana from the mana drain, I mean. So now we see the <laughs> Birds of Paradise attacking with the Vanquor. It's a really nice <laughs> feeling, old school feeling. You get to get punished. It's like you didn't bolt the bird. The bird yeah. is bolting you. <laughs> kind of, yeah. Which oh, still leaves a... Cedric a little, uh, a bit, yeah, short on mana. Like he would have loved to use something else. Mm. Uh, but the wasteland right now is costing him a bit of, a bit of time because there would have been Nissa in play already, generating tokens. Like in a technical sense, of course. We know that Jan would have had the other things, but... Yeah, that's a question you always have to ask yourself. If you use the Wasteland instead of the, um, playing your free drop, you have to think about it because he maybe plays around a counterspell, right? Yes. He has, he has to beat that counterspell next turn if the opponent isn't screwed. And so, yeah. We also see Jan here, again, not trying to kill the bird, but instead mm -hmm. developing the board with Jace, which yeah. is... It's risky again because Cedric is going to use the bird for mana uh, or at least for some damage. Maybe he's also going to kill the Jace. So your board situation didn't develop a lot. And here, ooh, we see. Wow, what? That's Cedric sacrificed the bird for an evolution. That's that's wrong. He just so... placed a Chandra on the Jace, right? I think he wants to get Magus of the Moon. If if oh. that's an option. 
Okay, yeah, I can see that. But still, like, he can do that next turn. It's oh, not like yeah, he... this yeah, but he, he was seeing the window that nothing gets countered. And also... <sighs> oh, wow, also... no. What? Oh, my God. Mm, I don't like this at all. He didn't want to give the op uh, Jan the opportunity to get any basic land from fetch lands and stuff. Yeah, I get that part, but... Didn't miss... Jan missed a land drop last turn. Is that right? No, no, he... He was the land was destroyed to wasteland and then he played. Okay, yeah, okay. But still, I I, I don't like this play. Why don't you play just a Chandra? Because your opponent doesn't play. Um... You cannot because the arbor just uh, didn't make any mana. Oh, never mind. Then I'm talking nonsense. Yeah, then yeah, then I don't hate this play. You could have played Nissa, but no, no. Yeah, the, then the Marcus is better. Right, no. right now you cannot play Nissa anymore because you uh, don't. Yeah, that's. Oh, and here we see. Uh, the mag is attacking, but the snapcaster mage can't be played because there is no blue mana. Oh. Wait, actually, the, the dried yeah, can attack. Yeah, the dried alva is still a creature, but that's hard to to know. Yeah, like, exactly. It's it's a mountain. It makes red mana, but it's still a creature. It's such an awkward game now. But it's also uh, yeah. free. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Jan no, now has a fire ice, which is nice. Yeah, and that that will. Uh, get him back into the game for sure, because also the Magus of the Moon is not restricting Yang. It's also, as we can see, restricting Cedric a lot mm -hmm. yeah, with only sure. having red mana. So Yan is pondering which card is the least effective in the later game, and he said Cryptic Command will be hard to cast. And this board state is not that bad in general. Like. Cedric must have anticipated that if Jace flips, he can just flashbacks the lightning bolt, which is accessible to the red mana. Yeah. So the board state was kind of foreseeable. Yeah, that's true. And we know now Jan doesn't even have to do it, and he could technically just say, okay, we'll just take a minus, right, and then shoot it at the end of turn, leaving Jace as the healthy six counters and being able to untap before... Cedric uses green mana then. Yeah. And even like Jace gives minus two, so he doesn't even need to, to take the damage to kill the Marcus end of turn. And yeah, it's really, yeah, it does nothing. What is Cedric doing? Huh? Yeah, he's <laughs> try, trying to. But it, it's, it's interesting how he's attacking the planeswalker and then takes the yeah. <laughs> to change the life tone. Why, why both of them would be so wrong with human level. Okay, now, so now we see. He's... Yeah. Uh, fire Ice taking it down. And at, at, at this point, I think Cedric is not even that mad about yeah his Marks of the Moon being dead. So Yeah, he's just drawing all the green spells. I mean, live by the Blood Moon and you die by the Blood Moon. Is that what the people say? Yeah? Uh, it's mostly <laughs> what, what my opponents say because I almost never play Blood Moon. <laughs> okay. Sometimes it's, it's it's harsh, you know? Sometimes you, you're paying a price. I... That, don't like this play, I think. So, oh, right. oh no, gets no. Okay, okay, never mind. Now I like it. <laughs> Tazigua, freshly drawn, is a nice cheap threat. And this is, yeah, this is just a very good position for Jan since he's sure. able to put some pressure on it while also having so many spells that do something on the board. Is it charm is perfect. Maybe yeah. some card filtering. Yeah, the, no, he... Into the Royal is also good. And yeah. there's the land, yes. There's the land, and that's exactly what he wants. Now he can play the Kodama's Reach, and he's on a healthy 15 life, so even winning the ways now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Snapcast and True Nemesis. I, I see there's just also a point. I mean, your opponent is not doing anything. Why not just cast True Nine Nemesis and say, Yeah, true. I mean, you're not pressuring me. Yeah, I don't why? have playing. Yeah. Uh, but I guess I couldn't I just uh kill you in two turns. That's exactly seven damage. True. Yeah. And well, at this point the writing is kind of on the wall. The red green decks are not very known for coming back from a disadvantaged sports position. Well except for Price of Focus. <laughs> but, yeah, but yeah. Jan he still has a yeah. Song. For sure, yeah. It's not what will really help him now, but yeah, there are scenarios where the Poison Focus gets you back in the game. But as we see, like, as you said, the cards in Cedric's hands are a lot of them from a new era of time. Yeah. Glory, Bringer, Chandra, and 
the Curry's F are about one to two years old, and uh, without those, the deck would lose a lot of power. For sure. And I mean, at the end of the day, we have the singleton format. So every deck which can rely with the um, apply pressure, which most red deck wins, uh, for instance, red deck can do, mm -hmm. um, or white winnie, or something like four color blood, they are good enough. Like the card quality is not that important most of the time, just the uh, curving out against other decks. So green red is really good again. Uh, being that deck, like being consistent, except for new not drawing lands, of course. <laughs> but yeah, most of the time it's just enough to have two, three creatures turn one, two, three to beat the most decks. So um, Karizam tries to get Rancor, but into the Royal says, nope, maybe next round or never. And Cedric here on merely 10 life, <laughs> revolting the uh, nine num creature but that will be too little too late. Jan is already attacking for seven damage, having mana drain, snapcaster back up. Yeah, that's 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 just it was a it was a nice run. And uh if Jan would have had yeah, a little less time to deal with the situation at hand, he probably would have died to it. But Cedric also had a lot of issues with the mana base. So yeah. right right now he's just trying to hang on but there's just so much defense so much card interaction from Jan which is not a point where you want to be <laughs> no and I mean that's that's also the beauty of the scapeshift deck it can play as a mid-range deck especially if you build it like Jan did with a lot of creatures which can do some some damage like Tazigur and Nemesis so and there we see the Nemesis and Tazigur getting in for the lethal damage. All right, so everybody got a point, and we see us in the final designing game of the quarterfinals. Yeah.